It's an old, old story, but it never grows old. Amen. Do you still get excited at the wonder of majesty and deity and omnipotence? Becoming a baby, a human child, to tabernacle among us. What an awesome thing. And it just, uh, let me just read part of the old story to you again. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angels of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly (laughs) there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. It came to pass when the angels were gone away, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And he came with haste. They were in a hurry. Found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered of those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen as it was told unto them. And I just want to talk to you for a few minutes today about we really ought to be more like the shepherds. The humility that the shepherds uh, walked in. And, and I wonder if uh, on those nights when they sat out there just listening to the bleeding of sheep and watching for predators, if they ever talked about the prophecies. If they ever talked about one who was coming. You know, shepherds did something special in those days. They, many of them looked among their flocks for the next sacrificial lamb. Did you ever think about that? They knew that it was necessary that a spotless lamb without blemish. Once a year they would take a spotless lamb, each family, to the temple and that lamb would give its life and the shed blood of that lamb was just for the remission of sins until the next year. But they knew one was coming that was going to change things. I wonder if out in the fields they might have thought about the first or the second king of Israel, David, who would say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I wonder if at times they thought about uh, the prophecy of Isaiah that said that all we like sheep have gone astray. But the Lord has laid upon Him the iniquity of us all. You see, I believe one of the reasons that the angels appeared to shepherds is shepherds walked in humility and shepherds knew that it took the blood of a spotless lamb to do away with sin. Could they have known from reading Isaiah and reading the Psalms that not only was He the shepherd, but He was also the Lamb of God. Isn't that incredible? Could they have known that the Lord would lay on Him the iniquity of us all, that He would be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon Him? I got to thinking about this. And I got to thinking, He's a mighty good shepherd because He knows what it's like to be the Lamb. Isn't that incredible? He's a mighty good high priest because he knows what it's like 
to be the sacrifice. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good king because he knows what it's like to be a servant. He's a mighty good Savior because He knows what it's like to carry the weight and the penalty of sin. I wish somebody would give Him praise in this place. Peter, following the example of the good shepherd, says this, The elders who are among you I exhort, whom a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, but also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed shepherd the flock of God or feed the flock of God with, which is among you, serving as overseers, but not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Yes. Husbands, you want to lead in your home? Quit trying to be a lord and be an example. Amen. Amen. I'll just go on right there being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, how many looking forward to him coming back, not as the bleeding lamb, but as the reigning chief shepherd? When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that doesn't fade away. Likewise, younger people, submit to your elders. Yes, let all of you be submissive to each other. And say this with me, and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble Hebrews 13 20 calls Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep I'd finished writing the notes for this message and laid study materials aside and walked into the kitchen and my phone dinged it was my oldest daughter Tamara who sent me a song that she had said really touched her heart. And the song was in perfect alignment with the message I had just written. We're going to do something different. We're going to worship right in the middle of this message along with this song. Please listen to the words.
the call of a savior on a hill nearby all alone he would carry the weight of all mankind becoming the curse for us he gave his life for he knew that his time This one up, he is the man without blemish. Wrap this one up, he paid the price, and it is finished. But death would have no sting. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The shepherds walked in humility, but they understood about a sacrificial lamb. The shepherds had a heavenly vision. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts Praising God. Notice how much praise is in this story. How can you go to a church that doesn't believe in praising God? Lord have mercy, we don't praise Him enough. Praising God, shouting glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace and goodwill toward men. And, and, and suddenly the sky was just filled as, as far as I could see. And you know what happened? God pulled back the veil between this realm and the next. And they witnessed something that only happened once in all the eons of eternity. I want you to think about this. How many know the focus of worship was always the throne in heaven? Except for that night. The book of Hebrews says it this way. Hebrews 1.6 When He brings the firstborn into the world, He saith, let all of the angels of God worship Him. And that night what the shepherds saw was the curtain pulled back and all of the angels of God adoring and worshiping a baby in a manger. Come on, give God a hand of praise. <laughs> Heavenly vision. And then they said, let's go. <laughs> We're not going to just hang out here. A lot of folks hear about Him. A lot of folks know about Him. But oh, we don't need to go get involved. We'll just stay home and serve God from our little comfort recliner. Let me tell you something. You can't serve anybody in your recliner, on your bed, or in the couch. Service requires that you get out and do something. Are you listening, body of Christ? So the, They didn't just hang out and say, well, that was wonderful. We're glad the angels told us about that. Maybe someday we'll hear more. No, they came with haste to Bethlehem. They wanted to see and know and experience and be acquainted with Jesus for themselves. Is there anybody in the house that's excited that you can come and see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and know Him for yourself? Not just hear what others say. Let's go see. They came with haste. Then after they met Him, they couldn't keep their mouths shut. Whew. 
Can I tell you, if you really meet him, you've got to tell somebody. You can't keep it to yourself. He's, I'm, I'm, con, I'm concerned about these secret agent Christians that are, you know, in a witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, there's no such thing. If you really encounter Him, if you really know Him as King of kings and Lord of lords, if you know He was your Savior and He was your sacrifice and He's your great high priest, and you realize how He's all these things to us, you can't keep it to yourself. So now when they had seen Him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at the things that were told them by the shepherds. I believe we need to start witnessing. If you shall receive power, Acts 1.8, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Judea, Samaria, or Judea and some, Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I'll get it here in a minute. The shepherds couldn't keep their mouths shut. I don't know about you, but when I get in a place where people are trashing His name, and treating it with disrespect. I'll say, I don't mean to be rude, but has he done something to offend you that you would use his name that way? That's right. Amen. How many believe that when, and they're just opportunities. If you love him, there are opportunities. I don't think you need to be obnoxious about it. And I've met people that just everywhere they went, they just tried to see how, how, how spiritual they could act. But how many know the Holy Spirit will give you opportunity after opportunity to share about these great things? that we know about. Has He been a wonderful Savior to you? Yes. Just stand with me as the team comes back up here. And how did they act when it was all over? Did they say, well, it's not politically correct to share what I believe. I'll save that for in the temple because I don't want to offend those who might believe in the Roman gods or the Greek gods. And we don't want to offend anybody who maybe believes in Yahweh, but don't believe that He's come in the flesh. So we'll just keep our little uh, faith to ourselves so that we won't be offensive. How many know that's what the world wants you to do? And that's what sadly most folks who call themselves Christians do. But I'm telling you, I can't keep it to myself. Amen. And the shepherds couldn't keep it to themselves. The Bible said they, were, they returned praising and glorifying God. Is He worthy of your praise this morning? I believe He's more worthy than a football team. I believe He's more worthy than a basketball, don't you? Is He worthy to be praised? And I know that they heard these psalms so many times. They knew it was right to praise like this. Serve the Lord with gladness, Psalm 100. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. Listen to the shepherd saying, We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and enter into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Y'all need to be quiet. People say, well, Jesus said if they're quiet, the rocks are going to cry out. The book of Psalms, the great shepherd who became a king, Said it this way, praise the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, praise Him in His mighty firmament, praise Him for His mighty acts, praise Him according to His excellent greatness, praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes, praise Him with loud cymbals, praise Him with clashing cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise you the Lord, praise Him. Hallelujah, the altar's open.